Greetings folks, it's Harkness, and today we have my very first airsoft review. My review of the AKS-74U by e and and I hope you enjoy the review. But first, T. Before we get into the history of the AK-74, we need to talk about her older sister, the AK-47, which was designed by Mikhail Kalashnikov. The AK-74 was created in response to the US M16, which chambered in the new 556, which scared the Russians as they feared that they were missing out on an opportunity. They designed a 545 caliber and created the AK-74 assault rifle and was issued in 1974 and saw heavy usage in the war of Afghanistan. The AKS-74U was created for tank crews, rear echelon, RPG troops, and hind crews. It was the weapon pilots and tankers would use due to its compact size, but the weapon was disliked due to the environment of Afghanistan, and fights happened in wide distances. The West would first lay its eye on this rifle in the Soldier of Fortune magazine, published in the year 1984, where it was called a Krinkov, or AKR. The AK-47 is an icon all around the world even finding itself in the flag of Mozambique. But in the Middle East, the AKS-74U has received a cult following because in order to obtain one, you either had to shoot down a hind and yank it off the dead hands of a Russian pilot or have obscene amounts of money. That is why it is no accident that many terrorist leaders and Arab leaders use it in their public press conferences as a show of force. Osama bin Laden himself owned two of these guns and would alternate between them. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi is pictured with one. The vice president of Afghanistan's sons were seen carrying the rifle and much more. It was a symbol of power and prestige. The AKS-74U is still being used today, mostly by internal troops inside Russia, post combat nations, irregulars around the world. The gun is called Suchka or Little Bitch by the Russians, and Americans called this rifle a Krinkov, and this weapon has been depicted in many games like Stalker, Metro, Insurgency, also in films, novels, and anime to numerous to mention. I don't trust others, I trust myself and my clash of Now it's time for the unboxing. Your e and AKS-74U will come inside this black box, which looks very, very beautiful. The best looking box, but who cares about the box? You're here for the rifle, but it does come with an information sticker on the top right. And we have a warning label here. Inside the box is a mid-capacity magazine that holds 100 rounds, an oil can, and some information sheet. They do not include a battery and a charger. They already expect you to have one already. Here we could see the oil can, the magazine, the mid-cap mag. Here we can see that they've already chronoed the gun and tested it, and it has everything. And not only that, it has their stamp of approval. At least they test their weapons before they ship it out. And finally, we have the gun itself. This weapon honestly feels really, really fantastic. Much better than the piece of shit that I used to own called the JG AK-47. The question is, where will you live? In heaven with God, your creator, or in hell with the devil and those demons we heard about earlier? We'll bring out your inner red alliance. Just by holding it, you could feel that strange tingle in your pants. It is really, really good. See the beautiful blued steel finish of this weapon. It looks absolutely fantastic. And here we could see the Russian Red Star with the number 92. My unique serial number is 035094. And we see a mag spacer. In order to switch the firing modes, the middle is fully automatic and the lowest is semi automatic. Pulling back the bolt reveals a version 3 gearbox. Listen to that full travel bolt.
Finally, I'll teach you how to use this weapon. In order to remove the magazine, press that button and it will be locked. It will release the magazine. To put in the mag, simply position it and rock it forward. And on the other side, you can see a button in which to fold the butt stock. Simply press that button and it will cut down the size of the gun, making it very easy to transport around. And then by pressing that latch, it will unfold the stock. However, by blocking it, it will stop you from using your side mounted scopes and red dots. And as you can see, I hold the gun by the weight of the buttstock. It is absolutely solid. It's built like a goddamn tank. I'm honestly impressed by the love and care ENL put into this thing. Finally, we're gonna do a magnet test. The butt is metal. Yeah, absolutely, it's metal. Top cover is metal. And let me just fast forward it to you guys. Every part of this gun is metal, apart from the pistol grip, the wood, and the aluminum barrel. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, look at me smile right there. Finally, we see the markings for fully automatic and semi-automatic written in Russian. And you can see the beautiful blue steel finish. If you could notice, there are bits of specks of rust. So this gun will indeed rust. So you um, better be prepared to take care of your rifle. In order to place in the battery, simply press the button at the top cover, revealing it, revealing your connections. Um, my connector is different as I have a Dean's plug installed but your gun should come with a Tamiya connector. So then simply slide in the battery at the top cover and connect the male and female plugs together. And when you're done, simply give it a good old tap. To remove the battery, simply do this process, but in reverse. As you can see, here is the rear side of the gun. It is currently on N, but if you flip it over, it shows you four to 500 meters. Why you would do that, I have no idea. This is airsoft, not a real gun. And here I'm showing you how to place a sling. I totally trust the sling of this weapon. It is very durable and it's made of solid steel. However, Russian slings are a bit confusing. More moments later. A pair of pliers later, I managed to get the sling in. And you could see it just hold its own weight together. It's absolutely phenomenal. Your AKS-74U will come with a reinforced standard version 3 full metal gearbox, CNC steel gears, CNC steel cylinder, 9mm ball bearings and a pump piston, with a length of 520mm to 740mm folded and extended, with a weight of 6.5 pounds, which is exactly as heavy as the real one, with an inner barrel of 300mm, with a muzzle velocity of 380 to 420 feet per second with a 020 gram BB with a magazine of 120 rounds and a version 3 gearbox. The motor is a short type and it should be able to accept a LiPo battery. Got one. Honestly, there's not much to critique about this gun. Um, I mean, the top uh, does wobble a bit, but that's completely normal because when you remove the, when you open up the top cover, the wooden handguard is removable. But anyways, I do have one bone to pick with this gun. 
it is that if you press that button a bit too hard, it will actually come flying towards your face and it could you could actually lose that thing. I've almost lost the button and the spring. Luckily, someone in the field was there to pick it up for me. And this is not really a true con as all AKs have this in common, but you're very limited to your accessories and optics. You're going to have to splurge out a bit. And another issue is that I do not like the way how the magazine looks like. It looks nothing like big light. Again, it's not really fair criticism. Many um, airsoft manufacturers do this anyway. As for my final opinion on this carbine, I have a lot of good things to say about this. The pros and cons. My first pro is that this gun has some solid riveting. Rivets are extremely important in checking out your AK patterned rifle because it's the piece that holds your gun together. You see those little uh, screw-like things on your gun? That's the heart and soul of your AK. And as you could see as I'm doing right now, this is the Delta 1 test. There is no left to right wobble. It's just one entire piece. You could use this thing as a club. Speaking of club, this thing is made out of solid steel and has a really, really beautiful blued steel finish. Has good internals for what you pay for too. And has some really authentic realism that has been placed into this gun. And it also weighs the same as the real deal and is extremely well balanced. And the wood of this AK just makes it into eye candy. I can't tell you how many times people wanted to hold my gun because the wood looked absolutely fantastic. And not only that, it's a collector's wet dream. How is this all possible? That's because Endel, the company itself, um, the E in Endel stands for Emi, and they're a Japanese company that makes the best airsoft internals. And the L is Land Arms. They're a Chinese company that makes real steel AKs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. By buying this gun, you're basically buying a real gun from a factory that makes real AKs. That's absolutely amazing. And as for my cons, well. You don't have one right now. AK 47s for everyone! I give it a solid 10 out of 10. A really, really, really solid gun. Anyways, this has been me, Harkness. Um, thank you so much for listening to my review of the Endel AKS 74U. And remember, folks, life is always good. Make the best out of it. Until next time. I'm the bird secret. Night. We'll be flying in the light and then we will catch the sun.